Hello again, and welcome back to Operations Management. In our last session, we were talking about process capacity. In this session, we'll be talking about effective capacity. Effective capacity tells us that for our existing process, how many units we can actually get out of that process per uh, period of time. So let's take a look at this. We're trying to figure out how many units the process can produce. So the another question we have is, are we able to meet our customer demand? How can we increase the number of units if we need to? And the big questions are, do we have enough resources and are those resources in the right places? If you recall, when we looked at the basics of a process, we have inputs being transformed to outputs. But in order to have that happen, we have to have resources. So with effective capacity, we're going to be taking a harder look at those resources. To do that, we have to get through a little bit of terminology. We're going to start with something called a resource unit, a unit within a resource pool. Not very clear, but if we think about a laundromat and we think about doing laundry and there's a big pile of washing machines, well, that big pile of washing machines can be considered a resource pool, a collection of interchangeable resources that perform an identical set of activities, in this case, washing clothing. So an individual washer would be a unit within that resource pool. Resource pooling says we're going to be able to combine separate different pools into a single flexible pool. So now our terminology says we have an individual resource unit and that unit belongs to a resource pool. We also need to know for that individual unit how long it needs to process a flow unit. So for example, a washing machine may take 30 minutes to process a load of wash. So that is the average amount of time required by the resource unit to process a flow unit. So the effective capacity of the unit, which is the inverse of the unit load, is if we have 30 minutes per load of wash, that means we can get two loads done in an hour, right? So we have the time, we take the inverse, and we have the effective capacity. Now, if we have a bunch of washers together, that means the effective capacity is that of all of those washers combined. So it's not just how long it takes one individual wash and says we can get two done per hour. If we have a bunch of them, it's two per washing machine per hour. So that's the effective capacity of the resource pool. What I'd like to do next is use a very, very simple example, just using one resource pool and walking through calculating that effective capacity. Let's say we have a teacher who takes 10 minutes to grade a paper, and that teacher has available time of three hours a day. What is the effective capacity of the teacher? So let's say the resource pool are teachers, and in this case we have one teacher, and it takes that teacher 10 minutes to grade a paper, that's our unit load, and our available time is three hours per day we have a total of 180 minutes per day to grade papers. So this is our available time, 180 minutes. It takes 10 minutes per paper. So our effective capacity is 18 papers per day. That's it. We only have one resource in our resource pool, so our effective capacity is 18 per day. Now let's see what happens if we change the number of resources. When we change the number of resources, we still have the resource pool of teachers and the unit load hasn't changed either. And the individual available time per teacher, that also hasn't changed. But now we have three resources. So our effective capacity has actually tripled. We now have three resources instead of one. So instead of 18 papers per day, we now have 54 papers per day. That's all it takes when we're thinking about effective capacity for a resource. We take how much time we have available for all the resources in the pool, and we're going to be dividing it by the unit load, and that gives us our effective capacity. Now that was an example with just a single resource pool, 
but in most cases, we have multiple resource pools for a particular process. So what we have to deal with is something called the bottleneck. And the bottleneck tells us that it's the slowest resource pool of the entire process. And that drives the effective capacity of the process. This will be a lot clearer when we do a larger example. And that's what we'll be doing next time. We're going to take the effective capacity and do a step-by-step -step example using more than one resource pool. I'll see you then.